10 things you need to know about Tesla superchargers. This could go terribly wrong. You simply plug it in and you're ready to go on your journey. That's gonna be a massive game changer. Good to know. Hello and welcome back to Artisan Electrics. Today we're gonna to tell you 10 things you need to know about Tesla superchargers. And make sure you watch to the end of the video because we're gonna see if it's possible to drive off while you're still plugged into the Tesla supercharger. So stay tuned for that, smash the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and let's get into it. So first of all, how do you use a Tesla supercharger? Let me show you. So you push the flap while the car's unlocked, the flap opens up, you unholster the charger from its holster, this is the plug that you use, it's called a CCS plug, and you simply plug it in. And then it will go blue to say getting ready, and then it will go green to say that it's charging. And as soon as it's green, you'll see on the screen it says supercharging, and it gives you a time remaining for how long it's gonna to take to get you up to the charge level that you want. So I'll show you that inside the car. So once you're plugged in, it'll tell you the time remaining to go to a full charge. I was actually nearly fully charged already at home when I left, so we're already at 90%. But just to give you an idea, you can set your charging limit by pressing the set limit button and then moving it. So if you're going on a long trip, you might want to set it to 100%. Normally they recommend that you, set, you keep it set about 90% max, but you can do it lower if you need, if you're only doing daily travel as well. But in this case, I'm going to set it up to 100% just so that we can get it charging. And then what it tells you here is the, the rate in kilowatts that you're charging at. So at the moment, it's a very slow rate. That's because when you get up to 90%, it ramps the charge right down and it just sort of gives you a trickle charge almost. It doesn't charge f like full pelt right until the end. It slows, slowly ramps down as you get a fuller and fuller battery. And it's telling us it's charging at 80 miles an hour and we've added one kilowatt hour so far. So once it reaches full, it will stop charging automatically. So when you want to stop charging, you go to the plug and there's this little silver button on it. You press the button, that will stop the charge and then you press it again and the charge indicator goes white. That means that it's unlocked and you can unplug the cable from the charging port. And then you just holster it back up again and you're ready to go on your journey. So a question that a lot of people wonder is, are they AC or DC charge points? So let's talk about that. This is what we call a CCS connector. And these two little knobbly, sockety, pluggy things are for charging DC. So these plug into the DC port on your car and will feed DC power directly into the battery. Now that's different from a home charger, which is usually AC, which uses the top part here. And what that does is it feeds AC power up to 22 kilowatts into the vehicle. And then the vehicle has an onboard charger, which converts the AC into DC to feed into the battery. That is limited to 22 kilowatts because the onboard charger in the vehicle can only handle so much AC power and convert it to DC. Whereas if you're feeding DC directly into the battery, which is what this does, you can feed a lot more power in a lot quicker. So let's talk about that next. The third question that a lot of people wonder is, what kind of voltage and amperage are we talking about with these chargers? Let me show you. So if you wanna know how much voltage and how much ampage is being used by these charging points, you can just look at the label. So on the label here, we have rated voltage, 1,000 volts DC, rated current 425 amps. And then it's also got operating temperature and um, enclosure IP code, their IP44, rain proof, just in case anyone was ever wondering. Now, that means that this 425 amp charger can charge up to about 250 kilowatts, which is really, really fast. This is what we call a version three supercharger you can tell the difference because of this. So this plug is 
just the one plug on this version 3 charge point. Now the version 2 superchargers had two plugs. They had the CCS and then they have an all, also like a normal Type 2 underneath. But that Type 2 is used for the older Tesla Model S's and things which don't have a CCS charge port and they are able to still provide DC power at quite a high rate to the older Tesla Model S's. So if you see a supercharger with two plugs, it's a Type 2. If you see one with only one, it's a Type 3. The version 3's can go up to about 250 kilowatts. The version 2's are a bit slower, up to about 150 kilowatts, something like that. So if you've got a choice, always take the version 3 if you can. So the next question is, where are they powered from? Well, let me show you. Let's come over here. This might give you a clue. Next to every set of Tesla superchargers, there's always a substation or some large uh, boxes with big fans on. You can hear them whirring away and they are doing all the clever and powerful stuff of converting AC into DC and then the DC cabling goes directly to the Tesla superchargers. So the big brains and gubbins and all the hefty work is done actually behind this wall. Now we can't get into this one because uh, it's heavily guarded and protected to avoid anyone jumping in there and killing themselves or something, hence the danger of death sign. But it, often you'll find at Tesla superchargers the actual DC power units are visible and you can have a look and they've got these big fans whirring away to keep them cool and they are doing that conversion of AC to DC in order to power your vehicle. Now one thing that not a lot of people know is that the superchargers actually share power from one main charging unit. So often you'll have an A and a B, so you've got for example here one A and one B, they share one DC power supply. So what that means is if one person is plugged into A and one person is plugged into B, it shares the power across the two vehicles and it means that each person won't get the full 250 kilowatts charge, they'll only get maybe half of that. So a little tip for you is that if you notice someone parked in an A, try and go further down the line. So if somebody's parked at 1A for example, don't park in 1B, park in 2A or 2B or something like that in order to have as much capacity charge for yourself as you can. Sometimes you can't do that because they're fully stacked out, in which case you just get a slightly lower rate of charge, but you should still be on your way within 30 to 40 minutes. So I've got a question for you guys because I've seen that there are actually A, B, C and D here, and I'm wondering whether it's sharing across all four of these stalls or whether actually with the version three superchargers they don't share power at all. So if you know, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear your thoughts about that. So the next question is, how do you pay? Let me talk to you about that inside. So if you look at the screen here, you can see current session and a pound sign. At the moment it's cost me nothing because we've not added any kilowatt hours. But as the number of kilowatt hours goes up, the, num the number of pounds that you pay will go up too. And what happens with Tesla is that you've got a credit card or whatever linked to your Tesla app, your Tesla account, and it will just debit the charging session from your account. Now, a lot of people have free supercharger miles. So what, how does that work? So some of the older Teslas, when they first came out, came with free supercharger miles for life, which is amazing. So they have unlimited free supercharging wherever they go, which is really cool. But unfortunately, Tesla don't do that anymore, as you can imagine, they're not financially viable going across millions of vehicles. But some people have been getting free supercharger miles still over the last few years because of the Tesla referral program. I myself have got about 13,000 free supercharger miles because some of my lovely subscribers have bought a Tesla using my referral code. And every time they've done that, I've got a three, uh, a thousand free supercharger miles as well as them getting a thousand free supercharger miles too. Unfortunately, the Tesla referral program has now ended, so that won't be any more. But for the moment, I've got plenty of free supercharger miles to use up until I run out. So the next question that we get asked a lot is, can I install a Tesla supercharger at my house? The short answer is no. So these take such a huge amount of power that it would instantly blow the main fuse on your house if you tried to connect one of these to, to your home. Technically, you probably could get one installed, but you'd have to have such a heavy new power supply 
installed to your house that it would probably cost over a hundred thousand pounds to get that done so realistically it's probably not a viable option for most people in their houses as i showed earlier it uses about 450 amps and the standard house supply is 100 amps single phase these are taking three phases of power converting it to dc for a total of 450 amps so it would probably melt all the cabling in your road if you tried to connect one of these to your house let's put it that way do you need a tesla supercharger at your house that's the question that you really need to ask because for most people when they get home they just plug in their car and they charge up overnight they don't need to charge their car within 30 minutes from zero to 100 percent so for most people charging up overnight a seven kilowatt charger single phase at home is perfectly adequate for example, my Tesla Model 3 will charge up in eight hours overnight, pretty much 100%, eight to 12 hours. So I don't need a supercharger at home. And for, unless you're doing hundreds of miles and literally having to turn around within 30 minutes and go and do another few hundred miles, you would never need a Tesla supercharger at home. Really, these are for en route charging when you are, say, here in Cambridge, uh, you're en route to Manchester or something like that, you're heading north from London and you get to Cambridge, you want to top your battery up to 80-90% again and carry on your way, then you'll stop at another supercharger maybe in Birmingham on the way up to Manchester or something like that. That's the kind of uh, use case that we're talking about with Tesla superchargers and not a destination charging system or not a home charging system. So another question that people ask is, I don't have a Tesla, I have a Audi e-tron or a Jaguar I-Pace or a Porsche Taycan, can I charge up using the Tesla superchargers? And the answer to that is hopefully soon. So Tesla have announced that they're going to be opening up the Tesla supercharger network to all electric vehicles. We don't know exactly when that's going to happen, but it's definitely on the cards. And so hopefully soon in the next few months, anyone with an electric vehicle will be able to come and use the Tesla superchargers to charge their vehicle. That's gonna be a massive game changer for electric vehicle drivers in general because the Tesla supercharger network is by far the biggest and best network of rapid DC chargers out there across the UK and across the rest of Europe and the rest of the world. So if you're an electric vehicle owner who you don't have a Tesla, you have something else, you will very soon have access to that, that charging network. Maybe even by the time this video comes out, you'll be able to access the charging network from Tesla and it will give you much more flexibility when it comes to doing long road trips. So another question you might have is, can anyone just come along and unplug your vehicle while it's charging? Well, the only way to find out is to try. Now the Tesla unlocking system works on the Bluetooth from my phone. So in order to do a true test with this, I'm gonna to have to put my phone far away from the vehicle so that it doesn't know that I, the vehicle owner, am near to it. And then we'll just go up and try and see if we can unplug it. I'll put my uh, phone on airplane mode as well and turn off Bluetooth. Put my phone there. So now I'm away from the car. My phone is on airplane mode, Bluetooth is turned off. And as far as the car is concerned, I'm just a random stranger, not the vehicle owner. So if I try to open the doors, for example, can't open it. It thinks I'm a burglar or something like that, right? So let's see if I can unplug it pressing the button. And I can't, it literally is doing nothing now. So it won't let me unplug. The, the charging port locks the plug in place with a little pin that drops into place. So if I really wanted to, I could probably force it and snap off the charging pin, but pressing the button here does nothing. Pulling the plug does nothing. So that's really good to know that your car is, is secure. Nobody's just gonna come along and unplug it while you're over having a coffee or going to the loo, um, because that'd be really annoying if you came back and somebody did just unplugged your car and it, it hadn't been charging. Good to know. So another question people wonder is what happens if the vehicle gets to full charge and then you don't come back to it for a while? Do you get charged? And also, do you have to pay for parking while you're here? Really good question. So there is something called idling fees. And what that is, is that if the charging station is busy, there's lots of cars, you don't want to have another vehicle waiting for your space 
and you're already fully charged and your car's just sitting there doing nothing. So Tesla will charge you idling fees in certain situations if your vehicle's already fully charged but you've not taken it out of the stall. So that's important to note. The other thing about parking, usually it's free to park in a Tesla supercharger, but there are some exceptions. Like I did find one hotel where they had a supercharger in the car park and they did say that you needed to pay for parking while you were charging up. Here in Cambridge, we're at the park and ride. We get free parking for up to 18 hours here anyway, and they're not gonna charge Tesla owners for parking in the Tesla supercharger. So that answers that question, hopefully. The most important and final question is, can you drive off while you're still plugged in and charging? Let's give it a go. This could go terribly wrong. Right, so it says, exclamation mark, charge cable connected to vehicle, disconnect charge cable to drive. And if I try to put it in drive mode, it's just doing nothing. It doesn't want to do anything. If I press the accelerator, it's doing nothing. So it just won't let me drive off basically, which is good to know. Would have been fun to try, but Tesla have thought about that and they know that there's always going to be some numpty who forgets to unplug it. A little bit like the meme that you've probably seen of the lady driving, I shouldn't say lady, the person driving off with the fuel pipe still plugged into their, um, their internal combustion engine vehicle and the petrol pipe is just completely snapped off and it's dragging down the road. Well, you can't do that with an electric vehicle. You could with an ICE vehicle, you can't do it with an electric vehicle. So that's another reason why having an electric vehicle is great. So that's it, 10 questions about Tesla superchargers answered. Hopefully that video has been of interest to you. If it has, it really helps if you smash the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. We at Artisan Electrics post videos all about electric vehicle charging, about the life of an electrician. For example, if you're a Tesla owner, we can install a Tesla home charger for you or some other brand of charger to enable you to charge up your vehicle at home. So I hope this video has been of benefit and interest to you. Share it out with somebody else who might find it beneficial and leave us all your comments below. If there's any questions that we've not answered in this video that you're curious about, we'll try our best to answer you in the comments section. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.